Have you ever had the feeling that you were just meant to do something fucking great with your life? Like, like really fucking great. Like, you were meant to be somebody, you were meant to do something really big, you were meant to be successful. I've had that overwhelming feeling since I was a kid. And I'll, I guess a lot of people do, but I don't know if, uh, you know, that's just me. But for whatever reason, I've just had that feeling. And for whatever reason, on top of that, there's always been something that's, that's held me back. Like, you know, it's a fear, it's a confidence issue or whatever it is. And these things, the further you go forward in life, like you always get held back by these things, but you want to try and learn and grow from it. Like I've been trying to do is develop myself personally to kind of break down these fears and confidence issues about, you know, what's holding me back from being the best version of myself. But part of that, to be honest, is really like figuring out what my genuine purposes in life because I feel like people don't become successful in what it, whatever they're trying to achieve until they have a real sort of purpose behind it so you know figuring out my purpose has been a really even even to now even to to really recently like figuring out what my purpose is has been really difficult for me and a lot of that is because you get held back by things right and one thing that really I guess triggers this and like trigger is a perfect word for it. It's trigger, um, it's validation of your feelings, it's who you identify with, and then how you balance that moving forward about um, the balance between validating who you are and your identity and trying to move forward from the triggers that block you. And the thing that triggered me to think about this is that um, I, I went through some comments recently on Facebook from uh, a post that I put up about the documentary that I did with the ABC. And naturally I just, I went through the comments because there's been so many people writing such nice things in there. So I've just wanted to like and comment on as many possible things as I can, which is pretty hard because it's had nearly 200,000 views and I don't know how many comments now. So I'm just trying to sort of keep up and like and love everything that, all the kind things that people have been putting in there. But there's two or three sort of comments in there which really uh, took me back and triggered some feelings and made me think about uh, this aspect of myself with validation and with um, who, I ident who I identify with and why I've struggled to like really meet, find my purpose in life and becoming like that perfect version of myself that I've always thought was inside me that, you know, I want to do really fucking great things with my life and, and I've been held back by so many things and fears and feelings. And, you know, that's a mixture of all different things that have happened to me through my life. Like, and it happens to everybody. It's about how you've been parented. It's about the situations you've been in, some traumas that you might have come across, even if they be little, like they don't have to be anything like massive. But when you're kids, like they seem like really big moments to you and they kind of put these blockages in your mind. So some of these comments I was reading was other people that had been through or experienced a similar thing that I had, maybe not themselves, but with a family member. And they're commenting things like, oh yeah, I had a brother or I had a son that went through lymphoma and um, unfortunately they died. They weren't as lucky as you. And I hope it doesn't come back, live a great life. And that's meant in obviously a kind sense and that's brought up triggers feelings for them for that video being there and watching what I've been through. And it's obviously, they've resonated with absolutely everything that I've said and absolutely everything I've been through, but then they've realized that I'm the person that sort of got through it. And unfortunately, the person that's really close to them hasn't got through it. And a really massive thing for me after what I went through, and this is everybody, and they're, they're, don't get me wrong, there's comments in there of other people going, yeah, I went through lymphoma, I had this rare thing, I had this rare leukemia, that was, 10, that was 10 years ago, or that was when I was 15 and now I'm 60. So, you know, there's hope out there, um, never look back. So there's two different contrasting things there of like experiences that people have. And I feel like there's so much to do um, with, I guess, the validation of what I went through and then identifying with who I was. A massive thing that, you know, I went through was my identification with myself as a patient, for example. Like, you know, there was obviously times where I was really weak, I wasn't strong, I was really sick, and I would just, you know, look at myself as if I was this weak cancer patient and I would identify with that. But the way that I dealt with that was 
there was people going through worse things than what I was. You know, there's people that go through accidents and lose their legs or they become quadriplegics. You know, I still I was I was still able bodied. I was still able to walk around the block. So I took about took out all the positive things out of that that I could. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I had some really important conversations with some professionals that made me realize that, yeah, you really have to validate what you went through as well because if you don't validate it you're never going to move forward from it so i had to do a lot of work on validating what i went through but at the same time sort of letting go of the identity uh, that i carried with that for example and that's really relatable to so many things and experiences in life and getting back to those sort of comments that people leave and they go through that experience where somebody passes away and they say things like, I hope it never comes back because, you know, obviously with cancer, there's a really high rate of relapse um, and it coming back and then people die of secondary cancers and all that sort of thing. So a big part of it for me was like working through when I get out the other side of this is separating myself from that thought of it coming back. And it's really relatable to any other type of trauma or any other type of thought you have, which is what I wanted to talk about with validation and identity. Because it's the same with me, like when I relate back to really wanting to do great things in life and I really wanted to really want to become something fucking great, is that I constantly get thrown back, you know, if I throw myself in a situation where I need to grow to become that great person or that better person. And I walk into it and all these old fears flood in and these confidence issues. And I'm telling myself a story that, oh, I'm not confident enough to do this. Or I'm not a really good social, in a social setting. I'm, I'm not a great networker. I'm not great at making friends. Like, and I'm being held back by those situations. But that's me identifying with a person that I was, you know, back in the past through the experiences that I've been through. But what I've got to do is really validate that that happened and then take key things away from that, what I've learned developing myself personally. And this is coming back to those seven key areas of wellness that I've mentioned before and really knowing that um, I can utilize those tools that I've used by validating what's happened to me in the past, but I've got to strip away the identity of who that person is because the person I am now is not that person. And every single time I try and take a step forward and I think back about that thing that's happened to me, that fear I've had in the past, that confidence issue I've had that hasn't helped me move forward, I take my back, myself back to that old identity and standing as my new self right here, right now, I don't take action and I don't move forward. So that's one of the massive things that I've had to work on you know, through these key areas of wellness as well. Like for a, a, a physical perspective, you know, your physical well-being is one of the key areas. I'll just create a little example. I said this to Courtney the other day. It's only something I've really figured out quite recently as well, is that I, and it, this is really important about finding balance in certain areas as well. So I used to be really overweight and obese and unhealthy. So when I go into an exercise setting now, I have confidence around whether I can finish a workout, whether I'm fit enough to do something. Um, and I also overcompensate and I overbalance that by over-exercising and I wear myself out. So that's where the balance perspective of it comes in as well. But I have to validate that I used to be that person and that's why now I have these new skills where I have a healthy, consistent, regular routine to exercise, but I don't identify with that obese person I used to be, so I don't have to over-exercise to then compensate for that. So how that relates to my sickness and about the cancer coming back is that I knew I needed to clear those blockages straight away because I needed to figure out so relating to that same thing, that physical fitness where I used to go back, I used to be obese, that's who I used to be, that's why I over-exercise now. The exact same thing happens with like a chronic illness or a stress or anxiety, like sim similar to what I went through. I can't be like, mm. every time I go into a situation where I think about the future moving forward, becoming the new version of myself, I can't be like, oh, is the cancer gonna come back? Is the cancer gonna come back? Because that immediately, takes me back to the person I identified with as a sick person. I start to work, stress and worry about that. And then I start to create physical symptoms. And to me, I feel like 
you know, I went through these groups like these cancer support groups as I was going through the healing journey and the conversations in all these groups were so fucking toxic because they were just all these people like, oh, I'm this much in remission, I'm so, I hope it doesn't come back. And it was just all these, all these comments about people, I hope it doesn't come back, I hope it doesn't, you know, oh, so many people relapse, I hope it doesn't come back. And they're constantly taking themselves backwards to that backward frame of mind where they identify as that sick person. And what do you think is happening when you identify as that person? Your physical embodiment starts to manifest what you felt like then. And when you start to manifest what you felt like then, your body has this state of memory where it goes, oh, that's what I am. I'm a cancer patient. I'm going to identify that. Okay, let's re-manifest this illness in my body. And I know it's not that fucking simple. There's genetic factors. There's so many factors of lifestyle factors, which is why I tried to change all these key areas of well-being because it wasn't just about me, you know, becoming the best version of myself and optimizing myself personally and professionally and all those things. It was about me going, I need to change every single fucking aspect of me and my key areas of well-being, including my thought process. So my body doesn't go back to that state of illness. My mind doesn't take me back to that state of illness. So I don't identify with that person so I can identify as a new person moving forward. And, you know, it takes great balance. So it's a, you know, it's a key thing that I wanted to go over today in those key areas of wellness because I've had a couple of people say like, you know, such a you know, what you've put up there, those key areas of wellness, it seems like such a big task to take on, but it's about just setting little micro goals in each one of those areas. And then when you go through each one of those areas, go, okay, where did this hold me back before? So I'm gonna validate that in the past, I was that person and that particular thing held me back. I didn't have my good spiritual health back then. I didn't have my good psychological health back then, but I'm working on it now. So. I should no longer identify with that person and I need to get rid of that blockage that takes me back to that point in time. So it's about not taking yourself back to that per person you identify with, but validating who that person is and validating the fact that you're a different person now. So this point moving forward, every time those triggers come up, go, okay, I can't keep identifying as that person. I need to identify as who I am now, to validate the fact that those things happen to me. And when those things happen to me, they taught me a lesson to move in a forward direction now. And um, <clears throat> like I said, it's just those micro goals about setting in all those key areas of wellness. And um, I think it was just really important uh, for me to sort of bring up those certain things um, about how I dealt with that situation moving forward because it's really hard for some people, it's really hard for people to set new goals moving forward because they get constantly pulled back to that area. And, you know, I don't know if this is going a little bit deeper here, but, you know, when I worked with a personal coach and we did some timeline therapy on my fears and all that sort of stuff, um, my metaphysical being, if you want to look up metaphysical meaning, it's like an illness that's connected to a feeling and who you are was my type of illness like lymphoma, blood cancers was linked to fear and terror. And I had to go right back to try and, you know, validate where that came from and why I identify as a fearful and, ter and, and a terrorful person, um, or a person full of terror, sorry. And, um, you know, I figured out what that was and I'll go into that another time because it's kind of connected to my spiritual well-being, and we'll get into that at a later time.